Okay, we'll talk now about uh, two other architects. We'll start with Gordon Boonshaft, uh, also connected with the day of uh, with May 9th. Uh, that's because he was born on May 9th, just like Rafael Moneo. So Gordon Boonshaft, 1909-1999. Uh, <clears throat> he died uh, in August, but born on May 9th, was an American architect a leading proponent of modern design in the mid 20th century, a partner in Skillmore, Owings and Merrill, SOM. Boonshaft joined the firm in 1937 and remained with it for more than 40 years. His notable buildings include Lever House in New York, the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University, the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C., the National Commercial Bank in Jeddah, Jeddah, I don't know if I pronounce well, Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, Manufacturers Hanover Trust Branch Bank in New York. Uh, the last was the first post-war transparent bank on the East Coast of the United States. I noted for myself these two rather uh, malicious words, capitalism, Apollonic, ap or Apollonic capitalism. We, I was thinking a bit when I was contemplating his work. Here he is um, in front of uh, the famous library that he built. Here he is again, Gordon Bunshaft. Drawings. Well, <laughs> more words than drawings, but the drawings are, are there too. And, you know, some, who knows, uh, you know, presentation uh, works uh, at the time without uh, digitalization. Uh, this is a, an interesting building that he built and we are going to see it in the Arab world, uh, the library, back to the Arab world and, uh, Anyway, no, uh, you know, flamboyant or lyrical uh, drawings by uh, Gordon Bunshaft. He didn't draw like uh, Alvaro Cesar, that's for sure. Now, let's see, 1942, Great Lakes Naval Training Center, the hostess house in Great Lakes, Illinois. We are talking about, uh, when was this built? 1942, well, close to mid-century, but before the war, before the war ended, and uh, I think it's modernism is quite fresh. It doesn't look like a 1942 building, building. And I admire the mid-century, mid-20th century architecture and design. It does have a, a fresh modernism, which, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I can say the same thing about our time. The Lever House in New York City, across the street from uh, the famous Seagram building by uh, Miss Van der Rohe. Well, he built it, he designed it, but the uh, drawings were signed by Philip Johnson because uh, Miss Van der Rohe didn't have the right to sign projects in, in the United States, at least at that time when he built the Seagram building. Um, so, but this is the Lever House by Gordon Bunshaft. Glass, glass, and glass again. Some green. Lever House, 1951. And, the, and you see the lever house, uh, of course, is this one here. And you see it from underneath the Seagram building by Miss Van der Rohe. So this column and the slab above belong to the Seagram building by Miss Van der Rohe, New York City. Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company building 1953. 
again, I, I would say a, a fresh, a fresh modernism, which is still valid in my opinion. I mean, if we build today like this, we wouldn't be really ashamed, would we? Gordon Bunshaft. Consular Agency of the United States in Bremen, in Germany, 1956. Now this one, uh, you know, is less uh, intriguing, perhaps, but very well executed. Con Connecticut General Life Insurance, 1957. The United States still has a lot of space, as you can see in this picture. It had then and still has, but the parking lots of the United States keep increasing. I, I read that 10% of the land of the United States is covered by asphalt for parkings. 10%, that's unbelievable. But this building is uh, in its own uh, almost international style kind of way, still uh, legitimate somehow for corporate uh, you know, for corporate uh, functions. Snow. Soon we might look at snow with uh, a sense of uh, immense uh, wonder in some parts of the world, which now have only three seasons. Istanbul Hotel in Turkey, 1955. Gordon Bunshaft, uh, you know, rather inviting uh, canopy above the entrance, although not very, very spectacular, but still. Turkey. So Reynolds Metals Company International Headquarters, Richmond, Virginia, 1958. The same kind of, you know, big corporate uh, buildings with beautiful trees, a courtyard. Sometimes I miss the United States. Uh, I, in the past, I, I, I wouldn't say something like this, but uh, here I am. Maybe not everything is bad there. The trees certainly, certainly are not bad. They are, they are beautiful. The bigger, the better. 28 Liberty Street, 1961. It's this uh, tall building in a city of tall buildings. The shadow of a tall building on a tall building. Gordon Bunshaft, SOM, Skidmore, Owings and Mary. All luminous it is, you know, <laughs> surrounded by very darkened uh, buildings. Maybe it was uh, uh, Doctor, the photograph. Montreal, 1962, another tall building typical North American uh, moving upwards. Albright Knox Art Gallery, uh, an important art gallery in Buffalo, New York, an addition because there is an existing building on the left, but he built this one that you see here. And you are going to see also the, the, the existing older building you see it here on the left. So what do we what do we see here? We see harmony through contrast. The buildings have nothing in common one with the other, nothing. Maybe two students of art, art students, maybe a pastoral uh, picture in front of a modernist building. Uh, Henri Moore, the sculptor the British sculptor in front of the building by uh, Gordon Bullshaft. He was also a collector of modern art. 
uh, he had uh, the money to collect important artworks. I hope I show here the his private residence where he also exhibited his uh, collection. I always like this contrast between an old building and a new building. A new building, which is not uh, timid uh, to say, hey, I have to respect the context and uh, behave like the old building. No. Travertine House, East Hampton, New York, 1963, his own house. He didn't build another private house. So the only private house he built was for himself, Gordon Bunshaw. I lived for two years in East Hampton, New York, so I'm nostalgic again. There are two East Hamptons, actually. There is the East Hampton of the rich, and then there is the East Hampton of the poor. And the poor are servants for the rich. And I used to take the bus to go to an experimental school that hired me as an artist in residence. And in the bus, I would hear stories, you know, of people who would go, a, a cook, uh, all kinds of people uh, who worked. Uh, the East Hampton is a, is a location for the elite, you know, for the very rich, but the very rich need people to serve them. And in the bus, there were exactly such people. And me, I even thought of uh, making a film, you know, called The Other East Hampton. Uh, start in the morning with the people telling stories in the bus, and then in the evening when I took the bus back home to hear the stories of maybe the same people or similar people about the working day in the famous East Hampton. I mean, you look here, you know, Richard Meyer built the houses there, and other, you know, modernist architects, playboy architects like, uh, um, you know, Charles Guidney Siegel and others. It's a, it's a blessed place, maybe too blessed. And it even has a pyramid. East Hampton has a pyramid. That is the garbage pyramid, because uh, you, you have to go with the garbage to that uh, pyramid. Uh, I mean, it became a pyramid, you know, through accu accumulation of, of, of garbage. Um, there, there isn't a, the, the garbage service, so you have to go with a car and discard, uh, you know, what is to be discarded in that uh, ominous place surrounded by, uh, you know, dark birds, excited about the remnants, I mean, the, you know, the, what is discarded by the rich and sometimes even famous. I used to work for a, an experimental school uh, funded and founded by a, a lady whose neighbors were right across the streets, Steven Spielberg and Kelvin Klein. But this is the house of uh, Gordon Bunshaft. Not bad. I guess all this land was his. Now this work is one of his most important, the, uh, the, uh, the Yale University, 1963. Uh, and uh, it was published uh, you know, generously by the most important architecture magazines of the 60s and even 70s, Yale University. As you can see, uh, I hesitated to pronounce its name because I, I'm not sure I can read it at this point very well. <laughs> Find a key, maybe? Library, Yale University, 1963. It's a box that floats and it's supported just at the corners, as you can see. I like very much this uh, tower of books with the shelves in the center. And also the stone that is used, we you know, which, which allows the, 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 the light to go through. And it is ornamental. But this uh, centralized uh, tower of knowledge 
with the books is uh, it's a good uh, it's a good attribute of this style library. Cartesian building, but uh, good architecture. Sometimes I miss the regularity, the order, the confidence, the, the luminous, uh, you know, uh, Cartesian culture uh, that at that time was, uh, was uh, you know, promoted. Now we live at a time of contortions and when, when we do not contort things, we build in a rather boring way. Gordon Bunshaft, a library at Yale University. And structurally, you know, outstanding. American Republic Insurance Company headquarters, 1965. Well, it does look like an insurance. Uh, a few days ago, I discovered a new word, outsurance. So there is the word insurance, but uh, I saw in an advertising in Great Britain, this word, outsurance. And indeed, if you have insurance, why wouldn't we have outsurance? And if we, if we have incubator, why shouldn't we have excubator? Uh, the building is not so interesting, but maybe the sphere the sculpture the, at the center, and I think I, I could know who the sculptor is, maybe an Italian, I think. Belgium, another bank, the Cathedral of Money, doesn't quite look like a cathedral, but it belongs to money. And I kept saying something amusing that an art curator told me. She said, Dan, you have to know, bankers always talk about art and artists always talk about money because we always, we always talk about what we don't have. Uh, Marine Midland building 1967, proudly moving towards God that is towards uh, heaven, that is towards the sky. And the cube seems to want to ignore gravity, but the cube is not by Gordon Gunshaft. What is this? A library and museum in Austin, very monumental, intimidatingly, it, intimidatingly so. Uh, library and museum, 1971. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's user uh, user friendly. It's 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 too too distant, too fortress like, too misanthropic. I don't like a lot of glass, but here <laughs> these uh, blank walls intimidate me. It almost looks like the Domus Eterna of art. And here is a former president of the United States with his wife, Mr. Johnson. Everything seems to be fine on this earth, doesn't it? Eternal happiness, long lives, great art museums. Carlton Center, Johannesburg, South Africa. He built a lot. Uh, with uh, SOM, of course. He built something, uh, well, anyway, there is in New York City a, a similar building, very similar. Cornell University, repeating the scheme that we saw at uh, Yale with, uh, with the prism of the building supported in a few points at the bottom.
one can get tired after a while of uh, Goldman Bunshaft. Solo building, 1974. That's the building I was referring to. I forgot how it was called. The Solo building, 1974. It's uh, on 42nd Street in Manhattan, right across the street from Bryan Park. I passed by this building many times, rather depressed and unemployed. Uh, these buildings are not encouraging for uh, you know depressed people. Uh, they are too sure of themselves, too tall, too shining, too perfect. Uh, Grace Building, 1974, is uh, similar. I'm not. I'm confused. Maybe this is the one I passed by. They are almost identical. But these uh, North Americans are amazing. They can build a skyscraper without any misery around it. So you, you have just the, uh, you know, the uh, footprint of the of the building on the ground, and it just moves upwards, and there is no other space, you know, besides the projection of the plan of the building on the earth, and and they do it. They they develop the technology. They can. They can do it in this way. I saw that in Frankfurt am Main in Germany, the you know they need two years to build a skyscraper that in, in 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 the United States can be built in a few months. Grace Building, yes, this is this is the one at uh, Bryan Park, Hirshhorn Museum, a sculpture garden again, Washington God. This one is, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, fortunately, there is a sculpture by uh, Alexander Calder in front of the building, but the building is, uh, it doesn't breathe. It's, it doesn't have porosity. It doesn't have impressionism. It's, it's just, it's just, uh, it could have been a, a bunker uh, against uh, atomic uh, attacks coming from who knows who. Well, we kind of know from who, from where. But Diller and Scofidio try to bring some uh, playfulness into this building, the Hirshhorn Museum expansion bubble, but they didn't, uh, it was not built, as I think. That's what they proposed. I rather, you know, uh, Burlesque. I guess it was a reaction to the, you know, cylindrical uh, opaqueness of what Bunshaft did. Anyway, the, this ex expansion or extension of Dylan and Scofidio was not built. National Commercial Bank. This one is is a good building by uh, um, by uh, Gordon Bunshaft. From 1983, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, uh, a triangle. It looks like an equilateral triangle. And there are erosions in this tower that make it uh, uh, open in a way that uh, the, the museum that you, we just saw is not. The plans. And the uh, section, you can see, you know, they didn't use the, the space uh, very efficiently, but uh, it's a powerful building and, it, it, you know, they had the money to ignore the, the lack of uh, sufficient efficiency in the usage of space. But plenty of empty space, as you can see. And you wonder what is the function of those spaces. And here is the building. Saudi Arabia. But then it looks actually better without too many so-called developments around. But when you see other buildings around, 
I don't know, man. It's 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 kind of uh, apocalyptic. You know? Another brave new world, perhaps. Well, the banks, they rule the world, don't they? The banks and the, the oil, uh, uh, you know, industries. That's it. And now I end this mini marathon with Christian de Portson Park. Just a second to, to activate the... And I don't know why my laptop is not allowing me to. I have to stop this.